Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here with Mitzi the Maniac. And yes, this is her full size. She's a perma puppy. This is a little three year old lady. All right. And um, while we're waiting for people to sign on, I, um, oh, oh, hi, Malena. While we're waiting for people to sign on, um, I'm going to do a little card draw for, um, I don't know, coronavirus questions. It's sort of a crazy time. I'm going to draw three cards from three decks. The first deck is a celebration of love oracle cards i love this deck it's um just stunningly beautiful artwork and it's 100 percent you know about love so when i do cards i usually do three decks and we're going to do a quick draw so it'll just be one oh hi carlos <laughs> it will just be one card per deck and okay and then i just let spirit guide so today's card is called empowerment peaceful dreamer look at that isn't that they're trying to get it so there's no reflection isn't that beautiful um and when I do three cards, um, the first card is what is the situation? The second card is the action or the path. And then the third card is the final resolution. So the situation now is about empowerment. And, you know, that makes sense because we are in, oh, how beautiful. Look, I just pulled the life force card. Isn't that gorgeous? uh we are disempowered right now we certainly are and when we look to our leaders i mean i was reading in the paper today about you know the uh corrupt leaders all over the world who are taking advantage of the situation for personal gain so um empowerment as sorry i'm always have trouble getting everything the right way empowerment as we're sitting at homes doing our part which is to stay still we kind of hope and expect that our political leaders will be doing their part to create a safe uh world for us to come out and return to this is like following the kt mass extinction where a meteor wiped out all life on the planet and only the mammals that were like tiny and burrowed deep down survived and grew to become us so you know this question is what <laughs> what are we going to do now to make sure that we're the next stage of human evolution that we're the mammals burrowed underground not the dinosaurs um so for the path this is a situation empowerment and this card is for all of us the next card for the path, the action, I'm pulling up Kyle Gray, Angel Prayers, beautiful, beautiful deck. And um, let's see what sort of action is coming up for us. So when I shuffle the deck, obviously it's not like we're playing poker. What I'm doing is I'm thinking, I'm inviting the the energy i'm connecting energetically i'm inviting my guides to um share their information i'm getting my energy into the deck um and i'm inviting the deck to resonate then i put it to my heart since i have the microphone i'm sometimes i put over my physical heart or my chakra heart or my cosmic heart depending on you know the state of things for this sort of drawing that's for all of us i'm putting it over my chakra heart um and i just i tap the energy in and i let it resonate 
I'm feeling the energy flow and connect. And I feel when it's like, okay, that's good. You know, just uh, shuffle a little more. And then I just let spirit guide me to the energy of the right card. And it's telling me two cards this time. Sometimes it does. So the first of the two cards is peace and harmony. Archangel Raguel. Thank you, Raguel, for surrounding my life in a harmonious light. Peace and harmony is the first stage of the path. And then the second stage that I was drawn to is inner power, the divine father. So thank you for co-creating my world with me. So the situation, for you guys, it'll be this way. The situation is empowerment and the path for harmonizing with empowerment, releasing the dis is finding your state of peace and harmony within yourself and then finding your inner power. That is the cards never lie. So if we follow these instructions and remember, where does manifestation begin? Manifestation begins with the emotional state that you're within. If you're feeling disempowered and you want to manifest, you will be manifesting things that are in harmony with personal disempowerment. If you want to manifest like health, abundance, you need to be emotionally neutral or higher frequency emotions, joyous, loving, caring. So if you want to manifest a better situation, a better tomorrow, begin with yourself always, just like when you're on the airplane and they say the air mask drops through yourself first before those who are dependent upon you. Find your way to peace and harmony. Find your way to inner power. Yeah. So if we practice this and go on the steps of peace and harmony and inner power, it will lead us to, and I'm using Denise Lynn's Gateway Oracle cards. Again, I love this deck. It's just beautiful. Um, and this morning, like I have about, I don't know, 50, 80 decks here. And so this morning I just like let my hands choose which they're they're up here on my shelf. If you're wondering why I've got a huge stack of them, uh, like a Jenga tower. <laughs> and, and Spirit just guided my hands to the decks and told me which was what. Um, and for those of you who go, oh Benita, you can do that, but I can't. Nonsense. We all remember if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm shuffling to get my energy in the decks and look at this like you can see it's like a beautiful sunrise like like you know this is where we want to go this is our final destination if we fill ourselves with peace and harmony and claim our personal empowerment where will we end up this one they're telling me move a little more towards here between the chakra and the personal heart. And that makes sense because all of this begins with self and then radiates outward. I'm feeling all the beautiful energy, the connection. You know, like when you hug someone and the, there's like this wonderful rapport between the two of you. And then you have that magical moment where both of you know the hug is complete and you release at the same time, but there's that wonderful glow between you. That's how it is with the card. When I knock it to my heart, then I'm like, oh. and then there's the release. And all right, again, two cards came out. So the first one is, oh my God, this is great. Um, being in the, okay, the first one is awakening ancient wisdom. Deep inner knowing is emerging within me. There we go. Sorry. Awakening ancient wisdom. 
deep inner knowing is emerging within me. So remember, we're asking, how can we be filled with personal empowerment? Empowerment to be healing the planet, not just sitting and watching greedy people, you know. Ugh. So how can we be in a state of empowerment while we're sitting at home, you know? And first, fill yourself with peace and harmony. And then inner power let yourself fill with inner power of the divine father and the divine mother of course of the divine if you do this it will bring you to awakening ancient wisdom and remind me if i forget because i have something to say about the awakening of ancient wisdom and that takes you to the final card being in the flow i am in the flow with the universe like Wow, I love this. So here's the thing, and later I'll photograph these cards and put it in the uh, the comments. Here's the thing. We can't control what's beyond our control. And what is beyond our control? It varies person to person. You know, just like if you go off to become a, a dancer, you know, you can only dance as well as your skill and ability that allows you to dance. You know, I'm learning the, uh, you know, the didgeridoo. And I promise, I promised a friend, as soon as I'm good enough, I'll do a concert, a small concert live stream. At the moment, it's so bad. I'm like, I gotta wait on that one. So, you know, if you're a tap dancer, you, you know, and then you go to do hip hop, it'll be a little bit of a shuffle ball change twerk situation. You can only do what you can do. You can only love those whom you can love. Here we go. Here's our little love. I'm going to move this over so Mitzi. So we can only love whom we love. I personally cannot send love to global dictators. I cannot send love to you know, Donald Trump or healing energy because I don't love him. So my, any energy I send to him will fritter away, but I can send loving energy to those whom I love and invite them to send loving energy. I can send healing energy to where it goes and harmonizes. You know, when you're in the flow, a small effort has a huge impact. And when you're forcing something outside of your natural flow, you, it takes so much energy and you have like, well, nothing happens. So be in your flow, fill yourself, fill yourself with peace and harmony, fill yourself with your own inner power so that you can be in the flow and awaken ancient wisdom. So before we go, um, so I just want to say, um, for those of you who have card decks, uh, less relevant. Okay, Missy, less relevance while we're all sitting alone. But when you first get a deck, take each card individually from the deck, knock it to your heart. When you're done, you know, like knock the deck to your heart. And by knocking, it's just like a little tap. It can be one tap, it can be a lot, whatever you want. Then when you're all done, knock the deck to your heart, shuffle it, knock it to your heart again. If you do this, then even if someone else uses your deck, when it comes back into your hands, if you knock it to your heart, their energy will leave and it will be your energy stays. This is how, like, you know, people are always saying, oh, don't touch my deck. I don't want your energy on it. But, you know, like those of us who are teachers, we're handing out our decks to everyone all the time. And when we're done, generally you see us and put it back, you know, or we get the, the whole box and knock it to our heart. Um, so then if I'm given someone else, I tell them, knock it to your heart before you work it. That way they're using their energy, not mine. And when they're done, they give it back. So a simple little trick, but it works. Okay. So, 
All right, so we're all here. And uh, the thing I wanted to say about awakening ancient wisdom is, um, and it feeds into what we're about to say. Um, when we think of Earth going forward, in many ways, we think of it as going forward, but it's actually returning to what it was. So we're like the prodigal child who left home and went off and had like, you know, adventures and then came home and said, okay, now I'm ready to be in harmony with the family. Uh, we're like that. And part of that is, um, and some of you may be experiencing this, the ancient gods are coming back. The ancient frequencies are like waking up. The ancient mandalas are lighting up again. So um, as we go forward to like new earth and you know, the quicker we get to that, the less death and destruction there will be, you know, I, as I mentioned. Um, as we go forward to new earth and the new harmonies, this will just be our reconnecting to the ancient ways. So those of you who like me, who do past life regressions or connect through the Akashic Library, right now is an excellent time to go back to your early lives and re-resonate with the way life was then, uh, because that will really help with bringing everything re-grounded. Um, so before I was cut off the other night, <laughs> so funny, my laptop was fully charged, a hundred percent charged. And then the energy just drained the battery. That's why I'm like inside now. Well, first of all, it was raining all day. So it's soaking wet out there, but also we're plugged in so we can't drain the battery. Um, there are different reasons why people are alive on our planet right now. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the different categories and know that there's even more, you know, because of course something as complicated as what our planet is going through cannot be summed up in a five minute chat. Um, and oh, Charlotte, thank you for your kind comment. And I want to say hi to all of you, by the way. Hi, hi, and so much. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, so reason one that people are here on Earth now is because that's what we do. We're humans. We reincarnate as humans. And, um, and obviously not all of us are human souls. Some people are members of collectives or members from other races. Um, who are here on earth either for personal growth or for uh, educational process for their race, their collective, um, or for healing and evolving the planet, um, or all of that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, hi, Uma. <laughs> so um, some people are in life because they want to be part of this experience. It'll be great for personal growth. Some people are in life. Um, there's a lot of people in life now who haven't incarnated in a long time because they're so evolved. There's a lot of ascended masters and equivalent because an ascended master is only one category of that level of evolution. Um, Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, listen, you guys, I'm going to take a quick moment to uh, say, remind me, I'm going to forget, remind me that Uma and I are doing an event tonight and I have a few other events that I want to mention before we sign off. I've never met you, but every time I open my phone, it's where you are live. Oh my God, Cassandra, that is so cool. That is awesome. I love these little coincidences that are obviously you know, meant to be connections. That's what makes life so special. Um, so what was I saying? There are, so there's people who are alive for personal gain and there's people who are alive for assisting with the global. 
um ascended masters it's like one category of that level of evolution just like um uh is it um if you go to graduate school to get a phd you might become a medical doctor or you might become a physicist or a music major or a you know 20th century bohemian dance major or you know uh my uh, my cousin uh brian williams got his master's degree in medieval tarot and he uh, or renaissance in the origin of tarot uh and he's no longer with us but when he was alive he was known as the international renaissance man of tarot and he designed the most beautiful tarots um you know it's like we create our own higher state of being not just in life but beyond life so um like if you go off to become an ascended master it doesn't mean you have to heal the planet you can be an ascended master because you just evolved so a lot of those people and animals uh, and nature connection are returned here and now um and some of them know what's going on they just don't talk about it and some of them they don't know it's like oh that'll be so much fun i haven't been alive in a few thousand years let's uh go and make everything like gone like total amnesia until it's time to awaken and then i'll be full download think i'm going insane for a few months and then get to work so having said that um and i mentioned the other day I know a significant number of people who came here to life who soul contracted that at this time they would die and that was for sometimes for personal reason for mandala development reason for healing the planet reason for like you know so many different reasons but i want to be clear that does not mean that the coronavirus was guaranteed to happen what it means is humanity is on a life path and the life path we're on creates a path for our planet you know planet earth's life path earth has a destination it must get to it is part of nine planets that all agreed to evolve to a certain frequency uh, so that they all could connect together that's a whole other story we are supposed to be on this path here except humanity is kind of going on this path here and it's going to a direction that you know is not going to go well for us so in order to divert it back here something was going to happen there's no question i mean there's no way to keep going on whatever path you're on something will happen and we were on a path that was inevitably going to lead towards you know some sort of global pandemic that was unquestionable that's absolutely so there were people who came to life going it looks like the global pandemic is going to start somewhere in this time it looks like it's inevitable we're going to come to life now to be part of the whole situation and um hi natalia um so it's a little hard on us you know for me at this point i have a few people i really love who have crossed over who have died and you know i mean you can tell just by looking at me the pain is raw at the same time i'm talking with them on the other side and it's beautiful which you know it's really uh, I'm still figuring out how to balance all of this. Oh my God. You guys, I'm sorry, I'm going to turn you for a moment. There's Mitzi Mullen Bell. There's Mitzi Mullen Bell. Like I said, I'm broadcasting from my bedroom today. Um, there's a fox outside. The, uh, there's, uh, we have a few foxes who live. Um, in the woods near our house and one of them a mama fox you know uh the mama fox you know the mama predators spend all night watching over their babies keeping them safe and then they go out hunting in the morning 
usually early morning, but it's very safe for her out right now. So she she might be checking around to Mitzi. No, no, do not growl at the fox. Hey, Mitzi. Okay. <laughs> Chihuahua thinks she's going to go hunt a fox. Um, so it is hard to reconcile. It's hard for all of us to reconcile. And um, so what I'd like to do is lead you guys on a meditation. Um, if Mitzi will stop barking and growling at the creatures of the wild, lead you on a meditation to connect heart to heart in your physical body and your body of physical love and your soul body and your body of soul love with someone you love who has passed. Um, it can be someone who's passed now with coronavirus or someone who passed a long time ago, or, you, you know, if you don't know anyone who died, um, just think of anyone, a great grandparent or, you know, an aunt or uncle or whomever. Um, you can only ever significantly connect at the lowest common denominator. So think about it. If you are in a friendship with someone who's like a real downer and you're always trying to cheer them up and it, you put all your energy, come on, come on, come on. And you get them feeling a little happier and you go and you have fun and you're like, Phew, okay, I feel like I did a good thing, but you are exhausted. And then the next day you see your friend again, or the next week you see your friend again, and they're back down and you got to do all this work to get them up. The natural connection can only ever really happen at the lowest level where two souls connect. Anything else that's forced will be temporary and it will not be depth filled. So one of the issues that uh, evidential mediums have, and I will say uh, Uma is here and Carlos the medium is here, and they're both like two of the best evidential mediums I know, partly because while they do connect on um, the evidential medium, like I have your person you lost to, you know, your person who passed he here with me, they also connect on soul levels, on angelic levels, they connect on all frequencies. Um, and that makes the real difference on getting the full message. Um, if someone is connecting, you know, like if you or I connect, and we're connecting with someone who passed, but we only connect on a very 3D life level, it's going to be a painful connection if you are still mourning for that person. Whatever emotions you have from life, the most overwhelming emotion is the only way that you can connect with the one who passed for any significant level. But if you can also remember that you're an eternal being, you're an eternal soul who is expressing in physical life for the moment, and the person you love who passed is also an eternal soul who expressed in physical life for a moment. And if you remember that who we are while we're in life never disappears, we return and join the collective of our soul, which is our soul and all the lives we've lived and the energy of all the lives that we will live. And we are each one with our soul, one with each other, maintaining our separate identities. You know, we're more complicated than just one thing. Then know that the person you love who passed is not in physical, but they're not dead. They're living in a different way. And they're living with their soul and their collective, their eternal collective. So what I would like to do is lead us on a meditation where you bring one who passed and you connect as you are in life, so, you know, heart to heart. And then we will both of us go up to our souls and connect soul to soul. Um, 
So this is going to be a bit of a weird meditation. Because <laughs> um, Sandra, I think, yeah, um, I, I think that those we love who passed do help guide us on um, some of our journeys. And the more we listen to our uh, guardian angel, to our loved ones, to our soul family, to our soul, to our past lives, to our non-physical guides, guardians, and mentors, uh, to the, for me, the librarians of the Akashic Records, uh, Sasquatch. Sasquatch comes to me a lot. And whenever I ignore Sasquatch, my favorite eyeglasses go missing. And the only way I ever find them again is by stopping and opening up and connecting with, you know, the, the members of Sasquatch who have, who have come to connect with me. And then immediately I find my eyeglasses. So, you know, and I'll tell you until like a year ago, I didn't even think, no, I guess a year and a half ago, I didn't even think Sasquatch was a thing. And now like I chat with them. <laughs> so um, yes, the more you listen to how you're guided, but remember you're the one responsible for your actions. So when they guide me to do things, if at any point I have discomfort, I'm like, I don't know. Is that really what's best for me? I'll chat with them. I'll chat with them. Don't just go forward blindly and let anyone, even your angels, tell you what to do without like giving you the comfort and validation that you should be doing it, even if maybe you don't know why at the moment. Okay, so... I can tell you at this moment, my son is here with me, um, Calvin, who passed recently, and my grandparents are here. So feel welcome to open yourself up. Don't worry about just one person coming through. Even if there's one that you connect with, you may have a few that are here, like holding a space for you. Um, so get ready. We're going to um, ground ourselves deep into earth and invite Gaia, our divine mother, to um, hold us in her arms with love. And then we'll open our crown chakras and invite our guardian angels to be the gatekeepers guardians of our crown chakra so you know that you're fully protected that way whatever information or experience you have you know that it's 100 percent real um right okay so i'm going to invite you to relax your eyes can be open or closed. Um, if, they're, if you choose to have your eyes open, let them just be a little spaced out. And give your body permission to relax. Give your body, if you have any aches or pains anywhere in your body, give it permission to resolve itself and uh, release. You know, any tensions, any anxieties, let them know they can take a little break because the work we're doing is outside of that. And um, give your feet permission to relax. And invite all the energy in your body to flow down through your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. where our beautiful divine mother is there beneath us, holding us in her arms, sending all of our energy out, purifying our energy, magnifying it to the highest frequency of love, while keeping us warm and safe, protected in her arms. Invite your root chakra to just spread deep and wide. 
to give you a wonderful base of energetic support so that any work that you do is grounded and solid and real. Invite everything in your body to release and flow out through your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. Give the top of your head permission to relax. Give your crown chakra permission to open up high and wide. If the top of your head or your forehead or any part of your head or your eyes or your brain feels pressure or pain or discomfort, acknowledge it and give it permission to release. This is just your body protecting you, being a little resistant to anything going on without knowing it's 100% okay. Invite all the beautiful sacred divine energy to flow in through the light and airy top of your head and fill your third eye and fill the inside of your head, your brain, the pineal gland. Flow down through your neck and your spine, your shoulders down through your body, your hips down your legs, down through your open and flowing feet deep into earth where our beautiful divine mother is holding us sending our energy deep and wide just take a moment breathe relax flow invite all the energy to flow in sacred, divine, cosmic love, the love of source, universe, nature. Call to your guardian angel and ask your guardian angel to come and nestle in the top of your crown chakra. Send angelic love all around you and in you so that you are fully encompassed by the love of your personal angel, fully protected, looked after. Your angel is the gatekeeper of all all messages and connections going forward. Only those approved of by your angel as being good for your best, healthiest, most joyous state of well-being at this moment are allowed to come through. And let this energy flow through you and around you, radiate, so that you are in an auric glow of love and protection, divine caring. Beautiful. And now I would like you to send out an invitation. You can say, I call to all whom I love who are no longer in physical life. Be you family, friends, people I admired, animals, I invite you all to come here now and just be here with me.
remember we all have free will and we all have commitments. It could be whomever you are thinking of might not be able to show up at this time. We all have frequencies. The more your frequency is filled with pure love, personal empowerment, peace and harmony, inner power, the easier it will be for those you love to come in a way that you can connect with each other, to harmonize your frequencies. Invite yourself to just glow, love, and issue a loving invitation. You may feel love coalescing around you. You may feel like those you love are here. You may be hearing things in the back of your mind that feel might feel like random thoughts or something, or you may hear a little whispering, you know, we are here, or all the strange little ways of receiving information that you might automatically be thinking, I made this up, or this is ridiculous. Understand any automatic uh, put downs or rejections, it's just your body's way of um, sort of protecting against external things coming in. So let your body know it's okay, it's okay. We're set up, we're safe, we want to be receptive. So. Anytime an auto thought in your brain negates the experience you're having, understand that's an indicator that what you're having is real. Believe it or not, I teach whole classes on that little subject. So open up, invite all of these beautiful souls who have come here to connect with you, invite them to just surround you, to be here with you. Everyone that you love, everyone who loves you, who was once in life, who's not, including dogs, cats, birds, goldfish, everyone, to just be here with you. If you have pain in your heart, that's okay, honor it. But invite the pure love of your friends to flow into you and fill you. It's not going to erase the pain in your heart, but it can keep it company. Because you know, if they're here now with you, then absolutely they love you. And they know that you love them. Allow this wonderful collective of those who love you to just get close and hug you. You may have one or a few souls here. You may have hundreds, but whoever it is, invite them, just come close and hug you. And let their hug energy their love sort of come in through your layers, come in and wherever you feel resistance or pain, invite it to just absorb the love and do whatever it wants. It's beautiful. And as all of this love is flowing into you, honor your natural response to it. Honor yourself. And you can invite 
someone or two in particular to come forward. Or you may find someone is naturally organically coming forward. Receive them with open arms, open heart, in whatever way they come forward. You may actually see them with your mind's eye, or you may just feel their energy, or you may hear words or memories. Random thoughts may come into your mind. Whatever you receive in any way, you know, a song playing, whatever you receive, accept it. And say to your loved one, I experienced this and I accept it. I thank you. And give whatever response you have, which may be a conversational response. It may be a request for more or both. Give yourself a moment for this. So now, remember that we are eternal, every one of us. And whomever you've connected with is eternal. So what I'd like you to do is, you know, in whatever way, take the hands or embrace the one, whoever you're talking with, and ask them to help you rise up so that both of you can like float up to be one with your souls, still connected. So connect with your loved one, holding hands, embracing. You may find yourself just becoming like one energy. And look up. Your souls are up there. You're connected to your souls. You are never not connected. You are always connected to your souls. And together, Rise up, rise up, and you'll see, to help with all of this, your souls are connected. So rise up together to become one with your souls, your eternal state of being. Your soul is the collective of you in this life every life you've ever lived, all of your time between lives, all of you are together as one, as each your individual eternal being, and together as one soul. And your loved one is also one with his or her soul. So rise up together. 
rise up and uh, rise up rise up you may feel like your soul is so bright you may feel like your soul is just this beautiful energy it may be a visual experience for you you may even feel like you're going into a home and there's your soul and all your lives there or you may feel like you're going into a cloud or becoming part of a star system or it just may be a very emotional experience whatever the experience rise up and see your loved one for both the beautiful connection you've had in this life and for the eternal connection that you have and are capable of having see yourself for your beautiful eternal being and see your loved one for his or her beautiful eternal being and see all the wonderful feel it experience it wallow like your souls can merge together as one if you want just take a moment and feel this If you look around you, you will see that you are surrounded by souls everywhere. And every soul is beautiful, light, love. And you will see how harmoniously you are connected to so many. see the connections between you and your loved one you may even see the energy of all the connections of past lives together, time between lives together, you may see your eternal connection to each other. And how bright these bonds are. Allow this love to just wash over you, wrap around you. And allow it to gently support you as you find yourself returning to your body. This eternal love is in addition to the love of this life. This eternal love is a support for the relationship of this life.
we still have our pain from loss in this life. But we also have our love of our eternal connection. One does not negate the other. They just both happen to exist. So give yourself a moment to reconnect with your physical state, sitting wherever you are. Return into your body. And if you feel any ache in your heart, which I'm pretty sure you are, just know that this is a response to the powerful love that you were just connecting with. And the fact that you want this with you all the time in every which way. So it's understandable and honor, honor the yearning. Honor it because that shows the power of your pure love. And honor any joy you are feeling, any gratitude. Honor everything you are feeling. Because this is part of the equation of love. And honor yourself for having the courage to join with this meditation today. Allow yourself to breathe. Invite your guardian angel to just stay there in your crown chakra all day. And invite Gaia to keep cradling you all day. You may find that this connection that you've made just now will continue throughout the day. And you may get little messages or emotions. You want to know that it's safe. You can trust it. So allow yourself to be open. And, you know, say to your loved one, I would love to receive something from you, anything, as much as you've got to give today, anytime. But right now we're connected. Let's say today. Let's do it. And then be open for whatever you get. Keep in mind, you may be taking a walk and you hear a bird singing and something will pop in your mind. This is for you. And then the first thing you're going to do is go, birds sing. That's, you know, how desperate am I? If the thought pops in your mind, this is for you. If your first thought was, this is a message for me, accept it, acknowledge and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having a bird sing at this moment for me. You know, if you're walking and you see a flower that catches your attention and you hear the message, this is for you, acknowledge it. Here's one of the, the, Here's one of the rules about receiving messages, be it mediumship, you know, evidential or from angels or wherever. You have to develop your skill. So at first it takes a lot of energy on their side to get a tiny message through. They go to all this work to give you this message and then you're like, I made that up. Receive it, receive it, receive it. You want to get bigger messages where you're just having open conversations with each other. It starts with receiving and accepting whatever they give you, okay? And then the next thing you know, you're out walking and the person that you love is there chatting with you or you're sitting and watching a TV show and suddenly they'll show up next to the TV or like, it happens. But the more you are open and accepting and allow yourself to be filled with peace and harmony, 
and self-empowerment, the easier it becomes on both sides. So today, whatever you receive, know that you are safe and secure. Whatever you receive will be messages of love. So if you get messages of non-love, just send them away. You're either misinterpreting or, you know, whatever. Um, just be open. Messages of love. And, um, you know, feel welcome to uh, ask questions or post comments or share your experience um, in the comment section of this. Anytime, not just now, anytime, if afterwards things happen for you, um, that you have questions of, even if it's, I just had this experience, is it real? Feel welcome to share it in the comment section of this video. Oh my God, that was so much. <laughs> so um, I want to thank you. And I also uh, want to share as we're all kind of rebalancing, I will post in the comments. I have a couple of events coming up that I want to share with you. Um, tonight, Uma and I are uh, doing mediumship messages. And um, I think it's like $22, $0.22 for the two-hour event. Uh, we have a great group. It's all going to be uh, on Zoom. So you have to register to get the link. And I'll post the event here for you. And we'll be sharing uh, whatever mediumship, you, know, you never know what messages you're going to get. They're, they're always interesting. Um, and um, because we have a larger group, then we, can, we can't give a message guaranteed to everyone. So I'll start it with a meditation of connecting us to our guides and those we love so that um, as the messages are coming forward, if someone else is getting a message, you're non-physical friends, loved ones, guides can chat with you directly um, as well so that you can be getting private messages throughout. Um, and then what else? Um, Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., I'll be teaching how to work with throat chakra. And that will be great because throat chakra is not just, and that will be here on Facebook live stream free. Throat chakra is not just about speaking words, it's self-expression, both outward and inward. So part of the challenge we each have with our throat chakra is to make sure it's self-expression inward is as loving and supportive as it is what you put outward. Um, and make sure it's fully supported by your heart chakra, you know, and by all your chakras. So uh, that will be tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then um, Uma and Carlos the Medium and I and Rob Pritchett are doing a an all day on May 17th. Uh, we are doing an all day conference. Um, on uh, raising your personal vibration, raising your frequency. It's going to be amazing. And I think, I, I forget what we're charging for that. It's really reasonable. It's more like $40 or so for the whole day thing. Uh, so I'll put a link for that. And I'm not sure if we promote it. On Mother's Day, we're talking about doing another short uh, symposium. So there's things coming up, things coming up. Um, on Wednesday, May 7th, Carlos the Medium is going to come on my mediumship every Wednesday night. I teach how to receive messages here on Facebook Live free. And every Saturday morning, I teach how to build your personal energy center to be able to support receiving messages. Um, so Carlos the Medium is going to share some of his techniques this Wednesday night. So I'll put links for all of this here. Uh, for you all to be able to access. But um, if you can join us tonight with Uma and me, it's going to be a pretty powerful night. Very interesting. Um, and if you wish to hire a medium to talk directly with people who you love who passed, uh, Uma and Carlos are my 
people that I go to for this, and they're they're both really, really, really good evidential mediums. Um, uh, so I recommend their services. Um, I am not an evidential medium, uh, like. Many of you all, with all the shifts in frequencies, I've been opening up in ways that, uh, well, not new, it's not my norm. Um, so I've been talking with a lot of people who have passed, but they only talk with me about planetary healing. So it's not about personal relationships. It's only about soul contracts and planetary healing. So, okay, you guys. I don't know about you, but I need to go work in my garden for a little while and just like let nature magic heal me. The sun's finally come out. I need to go be one with the earth for a while. So um, thank you guys. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, again, feel welcome to ask them in the comments section. And I hope to see you all tonight with Uma or tomorrow back here on my page for learning how to work with your throat chakra. Thank you. I love you guys. We'll get through all of this together. Find our way through all the trauma to build a more beautiful tomorrow for all of us. Have a wonderful day and listen, love yourself, love yourself, treat yourself with tremendous kindness.